Hi, welcome everybody. This is Interview TV from Stuttgart. And right now, folks, we have a very special guest today, Dr. Jeremy Sophonia. He's a senior technical specialist at Amazon. And yeah, I think he's here to talk about, I think it's an iconic and really complex reality capture project. Um, Alcatraz. Yeah, it is this Alcatraz, the legendary prison on the Alcatraz Island. And uh, it has been brought to life in uh, yeah, really detailed 3D models, thanks to cutting edge scanning technologies. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, you're welcome. So let's dive in. And uh, first of all, so um, what have what were some of the biggest challenges your team uh, faced while capturing? So when I, I know it only from pictures, but the rugged, often hard to reach areas of Alcatraz. This isn't so easy to reach. That's that's a great question, and I probably underestimated I probably underestimated the challenges that we would face mm -hmm. uh, when you're invited to something like this. You don't say no. And you kind of arrive bright-eyed and, and bushy-tailed and, and ready to, to roll. But then when you arrive to site, you realize how big it is and how complex the spaces are and mm -hmm. how many spaces there are. So the workload and the volume of data that we needed to capture was probably more than I had anticipated. Mm -hmm. And then you also have challenges just with the general public because you don't want to interfere with their experience. So you don't want to be scanning and, and capturing imagery while they're trying to you know, be there. Mm -hmm. And so trying to manage our schedules to not conflict with the, the general public meant that we were uh, operating in places that were inaccessible mm -hmm. while the public was there, but then we could operate in the more public places like the cell house, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. while they weren't there. But to do that, we had to stay on the island. We had to sleep there. Oh. So we were waking up at four <laughs> o'clock in the morning okay. out of our jail cells, out of the prison, and uh, then we could scan before the general public arrived. And then when they did arrive, we would clear out of those areas and go to those other forbidden, inaccessible areas. Mm -hmm. And then when they would leave, we would have the evening then to have the place to ourselves. And uh, just to add to that, that was an amazing experience to be in the in the cell house, you know, virtually yeah. by yourself at How night. long did you stay there? Yeah, we were there for three weeks, so 21 wow. days. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. That's really interesting. Mm. And uh, yeah, but how did you... Um, ensure um, the preservation. So, of the, I think there are some delicate structures, and um, yeah, how did you how did you do that? So we were we were just mindful of the space that we were in and uh, approaching everything with with respect. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not only respect for the history, but also of the people that spent time there. It was a difficult place to be in prison. It was the toughest prison in the United States, and. Um, It was a place of, of suffering. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you're entering in these environments, you're not only respectful of what you're touching or trying to avoid touching and damaging history, but also respecting uh, the type of place that it, that it was. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, just trying to carry that respect into everything that we did. Mm -hmm. So it is, of course, also a, show, a trade show for solutions, technologies, and so on. So let's talk about the tools Amazon has used, but also your partners, because I also read that you incorporated Boston Dynamics Spot, for example, but there were also many other companies also presenting their tools here. So just tell us about the collaboration, what kind of techniques, tools, and so on you used there. So a gentleman by the name of Pete Kelsey had coordinated this project uh, with the National Park Service um, and the local archaeologist, Peter Gravatt. And um, the who's who of the kind of geospatial scanning world were invited. Mm -hmm. So uh, they'll have to forgive me if I forget some of them, but uh, <laughs> you know, the Elios was there, Regal was there, Phoenix LiDAR was there, the PIX4D guys turned up. Um, so uh, all these different companies came to collaborate and uh, try to capture the most complete model of Alcatraz ever attempted. And that diversity of skills and talent and the equipment that came was, was really cool to be part of. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, at the end of the day, uh, that's how we were able to image different hard to reach areas, uh, different tools that were brought had strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And by bringing that all together is how we were able to achieve mm -hmm. that type of uh, ambitious goal. Mm -hmm. 
And how is this model that you created used right now? So there are official sites, or is it just the, um, to, to preserve it into eternity? Or <laughs> what is this used for, actually? Now? That's, a, that's a common question. So that's a, kind of one of those, it's a cool project, but why? Mm -hmm. uh, the, I think one of the original ideas was to try to develop a virtual reality tour of Alcatraz. Oh, okay. So as we mentioned, you know, most of the island is inaccessible to the general public, but if you were able to turn that into a VR type of in experience, then the public could see what it's like inside of the power station mm -hmm. or inside of sort of some of the factory areas that were used previously. Mm -hmm. um, but as you start to capture the data and see what's possible, it's kind of the data was teaching us what it could be used for, right? And we were learning as we were going, but it's a historic place, so historic preservation. Uh, but there's a reason it was closed. Yeah. It's falling apart. The environment there, the, the salt air from the sea and the conditions are deteriorating the mm -hmm. building. So restoration works are ongoing continuously. Mm -hmm. So we hope that this information will inform the engineers of the current condition of the, the different buildings and, and um, structures, mm -hmm. but also help the architects and engineers design the restoration techniques to preserve it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing is always very important here. It's um, young talents, it's young people who are interested in a career, for example, in reality capturing or 3D scanning, AR, VR. Which skills are particularly important if you um, work in, in such a space or what developments should they keep an eye on if they're interested in, I want to work on a project like scanning uh, uh, Alcatraz? That's a, that's a difficult question because I think that this space is open to so many different types of people, mm -hmm. different types of skill sets. If I look at the, my colleagues mm -hmm. that I work with at Emerson, there's a great range of people with different skills and talents, right? So you have your engineers, your mechatronics people, mm -hmm. you have coding, computer coders, um, you have marketing people. They're still part of the team and help us deliver this message, right? But what I would say is uh, bring your passion, mm -hmm. right? Find something that's related to this type of work and be passionate about it. Mm -hmm. Wake up early, work hard. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's, that's how you learn more. Be open mm -hmm. to learning. And um, the technology is changing so quickly. So if I was being very specific about this person should do this to get that, I would say in a year from now, that would be obsolete information. So keep an eye on the trends. Follow different companies that are on that cutting edge. Um, engage with them. Uh, I know for Emerson perspective, and I know the other companies as well, that they're more than happy to talk to young students and uh, have interns come in and mm -hmm. spend six months with us or a year or okay. whatever, yeah. right? So just getting hands on idea, and, yeah. and follow the market, keep up with the trends and pick something that's of interest to you mm -hmm. and follow it with, with a zealous passion. Mm -hmm. You just said, keep up with the trends. What trends did you detect here? <laughs> Gosh, it's hard. Uh, so we've been here for the second day now, and I think I've seen two out of the three expo halls. Uh, it's been very difficult to, to watch. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of laser scanners, mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of new mm -hmm. laser scanning uh, companies mm -hmm. and, and technologies coming on board. Um, some really neat innovation in RTK and PPK. And by that, I mean it's getting smaller and smaller, but the accuracy is not suffering. So we're seeing improved performance and with the size package that we used to have to deal with. Um, but also uh, the um, uh, computing and the software side of things, the AI that we're seeing now, that's one I guess to watch because it's the buzz at the moment. What is AI going to do? And tasks that used to have to be done manually in software, now AI is doing that in minutes, what used to take days. So these are the things that I'm noticing that are coming into the forefront that we see here at Intergeo this year. Thank you very much, Jeremy. So I got very insightful news from you and I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Dankeschön. <laughs>